Hello there everyone, Nubkex here and welcome back to the second champion guide actually ever on the channel for the second champion that you get guaranteed from the secret rooms of Doom Tower Normal. Uh, and much like Archmage Helmet who we looked at in the last champion guide, uh, Akoth is a game changer. Like for me, Akoth completely changed my account and how I was playing the game and I want to show you how uh, in today's video and also how I've adjusted and started using him in more ways uh, with the release of the Hydra clan boss too. So let's dive in. Actually before we dive in, just a quick quick uh, word. If you do like the stuff on the channel, do subscribe please. Let, let me know, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment uh, and as well if you have any feedback for how you'd like to see these champion guides evolve. Is there stuff that you'd rather I didn't do that I am doing or stuff I'm not doing that you do want to see me do? Uh, let me know and I will try to incorporate that in the future. Um, but Akoth, 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 Akoth. Let's take a look at it. Akoth defense based epic. Uh, A1 isn't anything too special, but actually kind of decent for Hydra. Actually not bad for Hydra. Attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance, goes up to 70% chance when booked of placing decreased crit rate for two turns. Not a bad debuff. Um, not something you tend to build around, but for Hydra clan boss in particular, I think this is actually quite solid. Uh, all of the boss enemies in the game have a default 15% chance to crit you. Uh, and then if they land a strong hit, if they're against an affinity they're good against, they get a bonus 15% chance to crit. Everyone does in the game, right? So 30% crit rate debuff means that that boss will never crit anyone ever unless they have a boosted crit rate buff on them instead, somehow. Uh, so useful against the Hydra, right? Because you're going to have a variety of affinities on your team, and you're going to have a variety of affinities on, on the, the Hydra heads. It works pretty well. It's not too bad. Now, the real draw, the thing that makes Akoth insanely good, is this A2 Pyroclasm. Three turn cooldown, booked or not. What does it do? Attacks all enemies, has a 20% chance of placing HP burn debuff for two turns. Pretty crap so far, but wait, there's more. The chance of placing the debuff increases by 20% for each alive enemy. Which means that if there's four enemies, this goes up to a 100% chance of placing HP burn debuff for two turns on an AoE on a three turn cooldown. And this is what makes him the game changer. Makes him actually pretty decent for Doom Tower waves. Guaranteed AoE HP burn, and we'll see his A3 in a second. It gives you a three turn cooldown AoE HP burn for Hydra. There's always four heads. So this is always 100% chance. And then obviously for the Spider Dungeon, this is other the main place that he shined and what changed my account for me. He gives you a guaranteed, again, three turn cooldown AoE HP burn. So, so nice. Uh, and actually, in terms of the books, you can see with books, he gets 30% more damage. So he actually does pretty, he hits pretty hard with this. We'll talk about that when we go to the build. Uh, then his A3, Pyretic Release, five turn cooldown, four turns when booked, attacks all enemies, has a 50% chance of increasing the cooldowns of all skills by two turns on enemies under HP burn debuffs. That actually goes up to a 70% chance again. It also places a shield buff equal to 20% chance of his maximum HP on all allies for two turns. This is again just super solid, really nice. Uh, it's another AoE hit, does decent damage, again for an AoE hit. One of the issues you'll see is you have to change his AI. He does prioritize and it makes no sense. He'll cast Pyretic Release before he casts Pyroclasm, which is like, why, why would you do that? Why would you do that? You haven't put out your HP burn yet. So you do have to force him to use Pyroclasm first. He AoE attacks, HP burns everything. Then he AoE attacks. This is great for Doom Tower waves, really. Puts their skills on cooldown or Faction Wars, puts their skills on cooldown. And the shield buff helps you stay alive. And again, Doom Tower, Faction Wars, Hydra. Very, very solid. Uh, also, nice in synergy with Rian the Conjurer. I won't probably discuss that in this video. I think because he's defense based, it's hard to actually make use of this and they're not in the same faction or anything. And then finally, his passive, not bad for Spider and again for Doom Tower Waves. 10% chance, books up to 25% chance of putting a fear debuff on an enemy for one turn whenever they receive damage from HP burn. Again, pretty nice, right? So he puts out that AoE HP burn, and then like in the spider dungeon, all the little spiderlings just have a nice little chance of fearing themselves and missing their turn. Helps your team stay alive as that HP burn does its work. He even comes in then with a 25% ally HP in all battles, which is great. He can be your leader in, in Faction Wars, in Doom Tower, even in Hydra, where you can struggle to find good auras for that. I actually use it in a number of different places, so not too bad. Um, in terms of his masteries, 
I built him pretty straightforward. We're just going right down into War Master. He's got two big AoE hits. So just getting those War Master procs in AoE is nice. And then I have him going down the support tree. Bonus accuracy. I did give him Shield Bearer, right? Which increases the, the shield buffs he casts by 5%. Get a bit more juice out of that. And then pretty straightforward stuff here. You know, Sniper. Just better chance to place his decreased crit rate. Better chance to increase their skill cooldown on his A3. Uh... Master Hexer is another important one, which extends the duration of his uh, his burns, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, fairly standard stuff. Again, Arcane Celerity is nice too. Chance increases turn meter when a debuff cast by him is expired or removed. And just upping his accuracy to make sure that he lands the, the HP burns. In terms of build, and then we'll show you him in action. Um, I have him built in an interesting way, which you don't necessarily need to do at all. In fact, you could run him at level 50. You could, I've built him for damage, as you can see, or not crazy damage, but a medium amount of damage. Uh, this is sort of my Hydra build that I've been testing out right now to make him just a good solid Hydra champion. So I've got him with, his base stats are solid. He's a bit slow. He is slow, uh, but he's, he's nice and tanky. So he's got a good chunk of HP, makes him survivable, makes the shields he puts out a bit chunkier. Attack is, doesn't do anything. Defense, I'm, I'm aiming for 4,000, so he's a bit low, but he's okay. So he's going to be a good tanky champion. His damage scales off of defense, make him reasonably fast. I gave him 100% crit rate, actually 105%, so he's got a bit too much. Um, you don't need to give him 100% crit rate. And in fact, as we'll see when we look at the spider dungeon, giving him too much damage can actually be kind of dangerous. So be careful of that. Uh, but... 100% crit rate. I think he actually does pretty good damage. For example, in terms of legendaries that you'll be familiar with, uh, Sil of the Drakes and Vizix, he'll do more damage than Sil of the Drakes, but a little bit less damage than Vizix. Although HP burn will contribute a ton of damage as well. So kind of hard to, to quantify that exactly, but he's got solid multipliers and two AoEs defense based. So he actually, he will outperform Sil in terms of damage. So I've got him with good crit rate. Bit of crit damage, not too much. I've actually built him with a good chunk of resistance. This is for Hydra clan boss, so that he won't get debuffed or have his buff stolen. And then he's got 280 accuracy, which is solid. And again, I can flip these things with the banners and whatnot if I need him to have more accuracy for, you know, Doom Tower hard or we'll see where it goes. You know, it's tough to build a champion that can do everything. So this is a nice solid all-rounder build. If you don't want him to crit, you could just ditch the crit damage uh, and dri completely ditch the crit rate. He'll still be great as a support. And then just up his defensive stats or his resistance, his accuracy. Again, the, the crit stuff is, is the luxury that you would dump. Uh, I'd be prioritizing d decent speed, accuracy, and then just, just survivable stats in HP, defense, and resistance, probably in that order of priority. And in terms of the gear I have, so you can see it specifically, you know, it's, it's mostly speed, crit rate, a defense percentage is what I'm looking for. Resistance there as well. Crit rate gloves with HP and speed. Defense percentage chest, which isn't the best, honestly. Um, and then speed boots. I have him with a HP ring with a good bit of defense. Lots of attack percentage, which is useless, but it's the best I had. Crit damage necklace, which again is very expendable. This one is nice because it's lots of resistance and I want his resistance high. And then I gave him a resistance banner, again, specifically really for Hydra, for that little bit of extra resistance. Let's go see him in action. Let's see this bad boy in action. Now the main place that you want to run him, and he will work here at level 50, is in Spider. Let's go all the way down to Spider 25. To get past Spider 20, you're gonna need HP burn. Let's get some energy back. And this is my budget spider team, which as you can see, doesn't have a single legendary. So we have Akoth the Seared, actually brings our leader aura, helps our people stay alive. He's gonna apply AOE HP burn. Two cold hearts will go in. I'll probably do a, an in-depth video covering how this, this team works in more detail, but he brings us the AOE HP burn. Any AOE HP burner can do this, but you get this guy for free. He's in fact the only one I had when I got him. He was my first AOE HP burner. Two cold hearts for turn meter control with heart seeker. Uh, Aka, uh, Achak here for AoE freeze. Again, any AoE crowd control can work if it's consistent. And Renegade to reset their cooldown. So we'll see what it does. Just watch these HP burns here ticking. This is a budget team. Again, you've got three void rares. Uh, Ak uh, Ak uh, Akoth. And then Achak who is replaceable. Here he goes. Bam. Akoth goes in. He, uh, he AoE HP burns everything. Burns on everything. And look at this, we're resetting the cooldowns. One thing to look at right here, look at how much AoE damage he's done just from those hits, which isn't great. 
So that's one of the downsides, right? If you build him with too much damage, um, he's just going to kill these spiderlings. So they're going to die before the HP burn does its job, which is not good. Um, you can also see I've turned off his A3 here. We'll, we'll talk about why in a minute. So this is going to get a little bit close, actually. Will we get there? We should get there with that final HP burn tick. Come on. And there we go. And the spider is down. Let's run it through again, just so we can see it again. Actually, before we run it through again, uh, let me just show you how I've set up the champions really, really quick. So you can see exactly what their settings are. Um, and, and I'll explain why I had to do it. So for Akoth, <laughs> Akoth, I had to turn off his A, his A3, Pyretic Release, had to turn it off because he just, he'd kill all the spiderlings. No good. He has too much damage. So I had to turn it off. Now, if you've built him pure tanky, you could absolutely put Pyroclasm as priority one. So he does that first. Then Pyretic Release is priority two. And you give a shield to your team and help them stay alive. Renegade comes in. She resets the CDs. And then it doesn't matter what she does. Cold Heart, just Heart, heart Seekers. Both of them Heart Seeker first priority. So they each fire Heart Seeker. Then Renegade resets. And then Achak freezes. And that's like basically that. So we can see it again. And again, this works on every level. This works on every level. The one thing you'll have to watch out for is... Um, Affinities are bad like blue affinity is perfect because uh, Akoth is blue and Achak is, is red so they both hit just fine against blue affinity on other affinities It's gonna be worse. So for example on red affinity Akoth's gonna miss some HP burns You probably have to run it a few times But you only have to do those red affinity levels once and then never come back to them again um, <laughs> <you'll>, <laughs> and That's sort of the strategy there So yeah that's basically as it. You can see this is the spider team, budget team. Um, most of the time it works. One of the issues with my team is because one of my cold hearts is level 50. She actually gets targeted first. So it can get a little sketchy. There we go, actually 38 seconds. Absolutely flew through it, slammed through. This level 50 cold heart, her second heart seeker doesn't hit quite hard enough. So if she was level 60, it would be better. They'd kill Renegade instead of cold heart and cold heart would do a bit more damage and we could shave off maybe another two or three seconds. Uh, but yeah. Akoth doing all the work. He's an absolute beast. Um, I actually have, excuse me, blah, 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 a little video here. Let's see him in Faction Wars real fast. I won't show you the whole video now. Um, this is actually really long. I must have gone AFK while I was recording it. It was a couple of days ago when Demon Spawn Faction Wars was up. It's not up today. But again, Akoth in Faction Wars, he's going to be a good source of damage, right? He's going to do AoE damage. You can see, you can see right there because um, I think they're going to be introducing soon um, a update, which is going to give you more custom teams. Uh, but I don't have a spare custom team to set up a demon spawn faction wars right now. So you can see right there, Akoth does the wrong move. I actually think when I recorded this, he wasn't booked. I booked him in the, the clan v clan tournament that's currently going on for just so he'd be better for Hydra. But yeah, he starts with this piratic release. And you're like, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Akoth, you're such an idiot. So he does need that AI tweaking. Maybe it works right when he's booked, but I think he'll still do it the wrong way around. Right, but we're just going to blast through this. Um, let's just flip on to wave two. Here we go. Okay, so wave two. Let's go into wave two. Let's see how he does in wave two. So wave two, again, the idea is he should hit pretty hard. It's actually HP burns out already. That's kind of nice. This is pretty difficult because I don't have the reviver. There's an epic that can revive. I don't have him. Bam, in he comes. Pretty decent hit. Landed some HP burns. And that's basically it, right? And then he's going to come in. And these Valkyries are really nasty. This is a nice thing he does, right? These three Valkyries, what do they do? Well, they attack you with massive AoE damage. That also gives them a shield and counterattack. It's super nasty. But boom, there he goes. Akoth comes in. Pyretic release. They're all burning because he, he burned them. Or did part of the burning. Someone else burned them as well. And he goes, nah, no. No shields, no counterattack. Put those on a two-turn increased cooldown. So nice for Faction Wars to get you through. Th this level is real nasty. Oh, look, you see, there we go. Stand firm. One of them goes in. Luckily, we've got block debuffs with the legendary, to be fair, which is going to help us somewhat. So, yeah, but this can be pretty spooky. But boom, he comes in. And look, he's just so tanky. <laughs> like, they, they can't make a dent in the guy. He's just untouchable. Uh, we skip on the boss. He's gonna be he's gonna be only okay against the boss. The boss comes with some minions, so he will be able to burn them if he gets hits off early. But then his damage is gonna uh, fall off. If we look then at the culmination of this, here we go. By the end of it, how do we do on damage? So okay, that was a seven minute run, not the best run or anything. But Akoth actually doing pretty respectable damage, not too terrible. 
Not too great either. I think Achak was stealing a bunch of HP burns. He was burning a bunch of them with his AoE Frostfire thing. Drexthar obviously doing great burning as well. But Akoth, he came in. He helped our team stay alive with shielding. Um, and yeah, he's just you know doing a solid job uh, in the Faction Wars. He's not bad. Then the final area I want to show him uh, for you in is in Hydra. I've been messing around with some teams. Let's look at Normal first. I've been messing around with some teams. So this is one team I put together. Um, let's just let's just click it and let's go and let's see how it does. Um, I think this team did about 10 million uh, on normal last time. Um, so this team does have, I will be honest, it's got it's got some champions in it that you're not gonna have. We got uh, Akoth in there, Rian is in there, the other the third Doom Tower uh, reward champion. Rian does buff strip, um, which is useful to stop this head. Uh, but if you look at this in terms of damage, this team is very low on damage, right? It's very, very low on damage. Um, Akoth is going to do a good chunk of it. So, for Hydra, we basically had him not use his HP burn on the first turn. I made him use his A1 on turn 1. This would basically mean that our head over here comes in, removes all debuffs, and then Akoth slams him with the HP burn. He got it on two heads. Could have been better, could have been worse. Um... So, I, I, yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. Could have hit it a bit better. It got removed off the blue head, I think. But he's just going to be adding up some extra damage. And then the shielding is going to help us stay alive, right? So he's going to be one of the main sources of damage for this team. All right, just those AoE hits, procking Warmaster. He'll put some of the decreased crit rates out. We'll see. It's not going to be up that often, but it's that every little bit extra that helps. And the concept here is that, yeah, he's just going to be applying those AoE HP burns every three turns and a hit that hits reasonably hard. Like Vizix hit that for 15, 1,500. Here he comes in. As you can see, Akoth hits for around about the same sort of damage. Like he's doing decent AoE damage there on his hit. Proking Warmaster in AoE. I'm putting those burns out. Now, unfortunately, this guy's gonna... Oh, he's not gonna remove it. Boom. There's a decreased crit rate. Cool. That head doesn't do much damage, though. But yeah, he's a solid Hydra champion, right? AoE HP burn. It's very solid. And he's tanky, too. Look at his health. Like he's in no danger of dying. Um... Like I said, it's one of the issues actually with Rian the Conjurer on the same team. He does like Pyretic Release for free whenever Rian revives them, but he's never gonna die. Like he's just mega tanky. <laughs> yeah, and he's not even built super tanky, but he's just never gonna die. There we go. HP burn on three heads and just helping us do lots and lots of damage. Will this team have enough single target damage to get through this? I'm not sure. It's through the weakness of this team. What I need to get into this team, I'll tell you right now, is an increased defense buff. Maybe I'll put into Taru Rhymehide instead of uh, Norag there. So I'll put in my Fusion Legendary, who'll give us increased defense, which will up Physics, Sill, and Akot's damage quite a bit. I think that could be kind of nice. Uh, that could be kind of good. You can see sort of the idea of how... Let's try smash this. Boom. He punches. Decreased crit rate. Lovely. No crits from this head. This head hits pretty hard. Oh, Mischief. So he does. Okay. And someone else has been eaten. Let's see how it goes. You could take manual control as well to make sure Akoth doesn't waste his HP burn right before this head does its thing. Let's see. Is he going to waste it? I don't know. You can do that just because he was going to waste it. Let's just punch this head instead. And let's see. So we just won't waste that HP burn or hopefully won't waste it. Oh, I need to tell them to target the correct head. Um, but yeah, there you go, guys. Akoth the Seared. Very strong. I, I will say for Arena, I don't think he's good for Arena. I wouldn't do him for arena like as you saw when it when we looked at the build that i put him in um he's already doing he's pretty much at the maximum damage he can do without ruining your spider dungeon runs right he's almost killing those spiderlings too quickly so if you build him with any more damage he's going to ruin your runs it's not going to work so that makes me feel like he can't be good in arena like he'll be okay starting out but surely you can come up with some better things than that Okay, there we go. We actually, look at this. We've actually killed two heads, probably mostly due to that HP burn. This is running great. Um, you can run him at level 50, just build him tanky. He still does his HP burn, it still works. But for Hydra, I think you really want to get him up to 60. And again, then you can do what I did, throw on some extra resistance, so he's not going to be debuffed, throw on that extra crit rate, that extra damage, and have him start to smack pretty hard. And uh, yeah, just be an all around great champion. Um, so there you go. That is, uh, that's Akoth. This is like a, a Doom Tower, and this is a Hydra run, and you can see, he's solid. You saw how he did in the Spider run. Bam, there go the HP burns. Beautiful. Great champion. Really good. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you liked it, and I will see you next time for more. Thanks for watching. Oh no, Akoth has been eaten. I guess that signifies the end of the video.
see you next time. Bye-bye.